Okay, next up are the holder for the water pump and its, well, clamp, shall we say. Um, right from the beginning on, I have to say, I can't make it as specified here. This says 31 millimeters. All I could find was stock with 30 millimeters maximum, so it's going to be a millimeter short here. But that's no critical dimension. You can see as the whole thing originally was cast, it's slanted on every side, so it's going to taper off to 30 millimeters at the top. And when we take a look where this thing actually gets mounted, you can see it's way back here and the only reason I decided for 31 millimeters is so that we have a uh, nice line between here, there and there. So when we make this thing one millimeter shorter, then we'll have a half millimeter gap on each side. So since these two profiles aren't matching from the beginning on, I think that's okay. It's either that or sawing a piece out of some 100 millimeter round slug and I really don't feel like doing that right now. Since all sides are tapered, it's going to be a tough part to hold in the shaper, but I want to at least do the radii here, these inner radii on the shaper because it gives a much nicer surface finish than just a round file and all the straight corners can then be done with a straight file. That shouldn't be a problem. That was 190 strokes a minute. Awesome! Right, so having done the math, I uh, turned the vise over by one degree. And for the upwards part here of the compound angle, I'm going to use half millimeter shim stock under each side, just under the tip, so that hopefully uh, the part will be half a millimeter taller on this side than on the other end. Apparently I drilled these holes wrong. Um, they line up alright with the holes I drilled into this thing here, but uh, when I bolt this down, you can see this contour isn't lining up because the whole block is shifted too far to the left. You see uh, the water pump will go in here and if we check that, then it's going to hit right into the bearing block and it's supposed to go just past it. So uh, these three millimeters here or what, I seem to have gotten the measurement wrong. I'm of course not going to make an entire new main plate, that would be suicide. Uh, instead I'm going to plug the threaded holes in here and drill new ones right next to them. Gee whiz, sir, I know nothing about no covered up holes in this area. And they sure didn't threaten to take my wife and children for it. No, sir. And there we go. Now, as you can see, there is no fouling anything. And the contour matches up nicely as well. This half of a hole here would, of course, be a brilliant job for a 10mm milling cutter. But uh, I just checked, I still don't own a milling machine, so what I'm going to do is, you can see I knocked out a small piece of metal here, 
and we're just going to drill a hole right through the parting line between the two and should I not be able to bend this thing here then uh, the other half hole and this chunk of steel would of course be a valuable candidate to make this thing out of. Okay, so there is that. Now the hole is drilled. It didn't turn out quite as nice as I hoped. It's a little uh, off the vertical axis, unfortunately. But I'm keeping calm about that one at the moment because number one, we can always slightly twist this block if necessary. It's just not going to line up with this uh, rear part here then. Um, and if we really need to, we can also bend the uh, connecting rod between the pump piston and the uh, eccentric that's going to drive it. So, And last not least, we could of course make this new. But for now I'm going to leave it as is, as I am pretty happy with how the rest turned out. So we're just going to wait and see how the rest will fit. So this strip is 2 millimeters thick and before we do anything I want to try if I can actually bend this stuff in as tight a radius as I need it. After having noticed I'm terrible at bending metal and completely clueless as to what I'm doing, I decided to make myself a tool which is hopefully going to work perfectly uh, right off the batch. So the idea here is that we put the strip of metal in here and place this half round piece on this side and with the aid of about six and a half hands we should be able to locate this in the vise. <laughs> Alright, and if we now give this a twist here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is actually working. Wow! Look at that! I did not expect that to go so well. Oh my god! It's incredible! Forgive my excitement here, but this even clamps on a 10mm piece of shafting. This is... <laughs> you know, all these moments where you look at a video and try it at home and it is nothing like it. It's ten times more difficult than it looks like. And this thing, I mean look at it. I cut it out with an angle grinder, filed something in here with a round file. This is also flat file and you know, put it in a vise and it's exactly like in the books. It's, I'm completely flattered and stoked and speechless. Well, I'm not speechless, I'm talking way too much here. Okay, here it is. Um, you can see I tried to fill the radii in with some silver solder, which worked so-so. You will also notice it's not quite symmetrical left to right. That's because the stock I use is actually too thin. It's uh, 14 millimeters and we would need 16. Uh, at the moment, it's the only stuff I have which is 2 millimeters thick. So we'll either leave it if it looks okay with the water pump in place and if not we'll just make a new one. It's not that big a deal and uh, you know for now it'll do. I decided the last part we'll make in this video is going to be the base column for the governor because it's the last large part that's going to get mounted onto the base plate right here. Um, the next video will then deal with all the smaller screw-on parts, for example the oilers here for the bearings or the crosshead guides here. You know, stuff that is uh, tiny and fiddly and is just best dealt with in a different clip.
with the memory card nearly full, here is the final column already mounted on the base. I left the sharp corner at the bottom so that the transition in here is as seamless as possible and off camera I drilled a 1.6 millimeter hole right in here. Um, later on a screw will go through here with a 1.5 millimeter pin on the end and it's going to stick into the bore somewhat and keep the shaft of the governor from falling out. Yeah, so that's that. I'll conclude the episode saying this is really starting to look like a steam engine. I'm very happy with the results so far. As said before, in the next episode we will tackle the tiny screw-on parts which will mostly be made on the little Emco watchmaker's lathe. Alright, that's it for this one. See you later. Bye.